and the Kevorkian Center in NYU Abu Dhabi for putting this amazingly inspiring, humbling, challenging uh, conference together. Um, I realized very quickly that I'm probably the most junior member of the presenting body, so I'm very um, honored to be counted amongst you, uh, so thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'd like to start my presentation with a quotation from uh, Bulanda Hadari's Jawad Salim and Fayyad Hassan and the Birth of Modern Art in Iraq from 1985. Fayyad sought to submerge the beholder in the atmosphere of an artistic work designed with remarkable precision, an aesthetic submersion in which surface and depth unite in one swift, emotional, a direct emotional response. By virtue of the cohesiveness of the parts of a given painting, and of their dependence on the central dynamic point of its subject. <coughs> here. The study and discussion of pioneer Iraqi artist by Hassan has often been predicated on a comparison between his work and prevalent modern European art styles, emphasizing the technical aspects of Hassan's work as entirely Western. This oversimplified view of Hassan's artistic career implies a flaw within the comparative method itself, as it assumes that visual similarities indicate a wholesale adoption of techniques and stylistic devices, thus denying the more complex view that multiple influences and motivations drew Hassan's artistic process. This paper seeks to reevaluate these overstated comparisons and to offer alternative explanations for the aesthetic development of Hassan's artistic production. I will do this through the, dis to, through the discussion of Hassan's motivations as an artist and the deconstruction of one of Hassan's most compelling works, Village Scene from 1958. Through this analysis, I hope to demonstrate that Hassan was consciously seeking to develop an, art an art style that was unique to Iraq, not imitative of Europe. So there are a number of foundational texts within the field of Arab art studies that outline a narrative framework in which to view the development of modern, Iraq, a modern art in Iraq. Now these texts include Wijdan Ali's Modern Islamic Art, uh, the Mesalun Faraj edited Strokes of Genius, Contemporary Iraqi Art, and Maymu Zayfar's work in several edited volumes on Iraqi and contemporary Islamic art. Although these studies have great merit in beginning and sustaining academic conversations on modern Iraqi art, they exhibit a reliance on a simplified narrative that sets up an unequal comparative relationship between European and Iraqi artistic movements. This is certainly true of the narrative's treatment of Fai Qasim, Within these studies and those that follow their lead, Hassan is identified as a type of father figure in the initiation of Iraqi modern art. However, what follows is oftentimes a brief description of Hassan as being heavily influenced by modern art styles in Europe to the point of imitation. Um, his work is characterized as being stereotypical, executed in various <coughs> European art styles, and lacking a distinct style. There is almost a complete disregard for the subject matter or ideological and contextual motivations of Hassan's work. Instead, he is treated as a master in European artistic techniques only, not as a stylistic innovator in his own right. I argue that these conclusions are based on the limited scope of comparative analysis, not on the realities of Hassan's contextual circumstances or his motivations as an artist. On a basic level, it can be conceded that a number of Hassan's work, works share visual similarities with styles like Expressionism, Impressionism, and Cubism. Certainly, Hassan's well-known paintings of Arab horsemen have the rough, rough brush, brush strokes and shifting light indicative of Impressionist works. Furthermore, works like uh, Hassan's Fisherman and Woman with a Branch of Dates smack of the spatial dissociation and fragmentation of cubism. Indeed, Hassan's oeuvre is filled with works that could be visually lumped into any number of Western modern art styles. Hassan, after all, was educated in France and was certainly aware of the stylistic devices employed by modern European art movements. 
Through a comparative analysis, then, a relationship is established. Okay? The identified stylistic interaction, however, is not based on an equal exchange, but implies that Hassan merely adopted and executed art styles imported from already existent Western modes of representation. However, the question must be asked, does a surface similarity in brush strokes <coughs> and composition indicate imitation? Zainab Bahrani and Nada Shabut in the exhibition catalog Modernism in Iraq make several points in which to open a dialogue in regards to this question and its implications. Among these points is the notion that modernity shifts in perception and practice with each new context. It is now widely accepted that the condition of modernity is necessarily experienced differently in differing circumstances and that modernism in Europe represents a particular set of historical circumstances, not a universal happening. Thus, to identify Hassan's work within Impressionism or Cubism is to label the work with a set of circumstances that may or may not apply. By consequence, Hassan's work is stripped of its own intellectual basis and presented as merely an exercise in, in aesthetic imitation. It further denies the artistic heritage of the Iraqi people by implying that the West was the only viable source for stylistic inspiration. This can be identified as a major limitation of the comparative method when performing a cross-cultural analysis of art. Methods and materials of art production may be easily transferred, but ideological and contextual motivations cannot be detected through a mere aesthetic comparison. Therefore, we must allow Iraqi artists to, re to regain their agency within the modernist discourse and acknowledge that, their own that they had their own intellectual stimulus for the creation of art. Within this perspective, Hassan's work becomes anything but derivative. Conversely, Hassan can be considered an innovator in that he synthesized many different influences to achieve his artistic goal the creation of an art form that Iraqis could identify with and could be proud of. Throughout Hassan's, uh, Faith Hassan's professional career, he took a personal responsibility in cultivating the technical and conceptual prowess of Iraqi art. As an important educator and founder of the pioneers, al Rawal, Faith Hassan was consciously poised to shape the direction and nature of Iraqi modern art and to create a distinctive path for subsequent generations of Iraqi artists. Although Hassan was indeed interested in developing an understanding of Western painting techniques, he recognized that technique was merely a means to express an idea and not the terminal goal of his artistic practice. He was also searching for ways to infuse his artwork with what he perceived to be the cultural essentials of Iraqi society, an Iraqi essence of sorts. And this desire becomes the crux of his artistic philosophy. Furthermore, Hassan identified with the peasant class that lived on the sort of margins, and he made the village a signifier for the larger collective. Not only did he embrace the laborer, the fisherman, and the Bedouin as subject matter, but he synthesized the sites of their daily life into an aesthetic that referred to the traditions of an Iraqi past, as well as the vibrancy of a living culture. This can be demonstrated through his quasi-Cubist works produced during the 1950s. Now, not much analytical work has been dedicated to the deconstruction of these pieces, as his representations of uh, Arab horsemen have really come to define his artistic output. Um, for the purposes of this paper, I will focus analytical attention on one of Hassan's work, uh, works, a village scene from 1958, to discuss sort of possible localized origins for his uh, distinctive style. Now, village scene exhibits Hassan's tendency towards abstraction, yet the painting also reminds the viewer that within the context of modern Iraq, art really never departed from the realm of representation um, and the realm of narrative. Hassan himself makes mention of the relationship between content and abstraction, <coughs> referencing the Arab artistic tendency to hide representational forms within a, an abstract presentation. Now, falling within the Cubist paradigm, 
Hassan reduces figures into a flat configuration of angular lines and solid masses of color. This can clearly be seen in Village Scene, where each figure is rendered through, black, through a thick black outline filled with reductive coloring. Space, as well as volume, has been flattened and made irrelevant, whilst line direction and color take primacy over visual reality. Now, before being tempted to label Hassan's work as just an imitation of Cubism and of the Cubist aesthetic, it is important to note that within the visual tradition claimed by Iraqi modern artists, there was a strong precedence for this type of abstraction. Now, in Hassan's village scene, the lines defy the organic as they come to rigid points to create the outlines of the figures. Coupled with the rigor of their formation, the lines are drawn in active di uh, directional positions as they form dynamic diagonals and verticals, implied and actual lines formed within a loose grid, are formed within a loose grid. Each of the six figures occupies an inferred register and become pictographs themselves through rigid positioning. This use of line is strongly reminiscent of the visual language of cuneiform. Oftentimes organized in registers, cuneiform is composed of diagonally and vertically <coughs> oriented line formations. Now translations aside, the pictorial language creates a very striking linear aesthetic that can be seen throughout Hassan's works. Being iconic of the Sumerian culture, the pictographic tablets of cuneiform would have resonated with Iraqi modern artists who were seeking to incorporate ancient Mesopotamian imagery into their developing aesthetic. Now, despite the strong visual parallel between Hassan's uh, rendition of line and the pictographic language of cuneiform, there are other sort of localized aesthetic con considerations at play within Hassan's quasi-cubist works. Now, obeying the various uh, rectilinear shapes created by the rhythmic use of vertical and diagonal lines, the primary color, colors of Hassan's composition fall into an abstract pattern that transposes the rendered figures. This type of patterning through the segregation and repetition of color is indicative of Arab jewelry and textiles, both <coughs> past and present. Hassan's use of solid primary colors enhances this connection as vibrant yellows and reds were often used in pre-Islamic and Islamic age decorative textiles, as well as in Iraqi folk arts contemporary to Hassan. In fact, when Hassan was exploring abstraction, he looked towards Arab handicrafts for inspiration. These <coughs> items of material culture would have been particularly significant as they were objects that would have occupied the homes and the uh, marketplaces of Hassan's subjects. Now this use of pattern also points to another traditional sort of aesthetic incorporated into Hassan's paintings, that of Islamic abstraction. Now within the Islamic decorative tradition, there is often a fragmentation of the picture plane, meaning a representational form is deconstructed and interpreted into geometric and vegetal patterning. In essence, Hassan's use of cubism in this context can be viewed as just an interpretation of this technique. Now, village scene, for instance, employs this type of fragmentation through the deconstruction of recognizable space into geometric patterns articulated in color and sort of overlying the primary figures. Now, although there is a strong emphasis, of course, on line and color, as well as the presence of this sort of reductive <laughs> patterning, within Hassan's work, there is also the ever-present structure, narrative structure that denies sort of this complete abstraction. Um, it can be argued that this interest in narrative was spawned by Hassan's interaction with the images from the Mahmoud al-Hariri. It is significant that Hassan chose uh, it is significant that Hassan chose to depict a clear subject matter despite his, his experiments in abstraction. This indicates that he was concerned as much with conveying a sense of social solidarity as he was with aesthetic experimentation. Now within Hassan's village scene, actual space and implied time work together to project a sort of narrative sequence. Each character inhabits their own color field, which become their spatial container. 
This is most clearly exhibited. Let me see if I have. Okay. This is most clearly exhibited with the block of red encircling the figure, wiping sweat from his brow. These color fields shift due to their due to the style of the painting, and encompass various characters at different visual moments. For example, the woman bending to grasp a tuft of hay inhabits three different zones of color and line. And the effect of this shifting is to imply sort of time lapses or multiple narrative happenings. The figures seem to occupy transient time and space as they embody multiple positions in one depicted moment. Interestingly, a narrative technique used by both ancient Egyptians and Mesopotamians. Furthermore, the narrative style insinuates that the individual, whilst working within their own space, also participates in the collective. This type of spatial containment uh, that emphasizes the individual's role sort of within the collective can also be seen throughout the illuminations of the Makmat. <clears throat> now the characters themselves should not be viewed as representations of actual people, of course, but as signifiers used by the artist to achieve an intended meaning. As such, the characters become conceptual types that aid in the contemplation of external realities. In Hassan's village scene, the characters embody the everyday hardworking classes of the Iraqi citizenry. They, the subjects drink, they gather hay, they wipe sweat, and they buy and sell. Their humble activities have been monumentalized, not in an effort to glorify the mundane and the laborious, but to make those who engage in these activities heroes, sort of in their own right. In this, these popular subjects become signifiers for the Iraqi spirit and embody the artistic <coughs> aspirations of their creator. Now, this analysis has been undertaken not to make sort of definitive conclusions, okay, but to offer alternative explanations for Hassan's art, uh, aesthetic choices that were not exclusively the result of Western uh, imitation, influence, or mimicry, right? <coughs> Now, although the West held some sway over the development of Hassan's artistic practice, it was far from being the driving force behind his career. In fact, Hassan was an active cultural agent in the creation of an art form that was unique to Iraq, but demanded the respect of the international art community. We must then resist labeling Hassan's work as Eurocentric, when other factors were clearly involved in the development of his artistic process. So rather than allowing comparisons to sort of dictate a relationship of inequality, we must allow his work to stand on its own intellectual merit and study its visuality within its sort of localized context, thus acknowledging a multitude of influences and motivations that ultimately shaped the most significant, one of the most, I should say, significant careers of modern Iraqi art, and I dare say, of the global art movement itself. Thank you. Thank you.